everyone. Thank you for joining me today for our third session. If you would like to catch up on the previous sessions, you can do that on YouTube or on our Facebook page. Uh, all the links are on that so you can um, get up to date. Now we've looked so far at why it is that the state of our hearts matter and how it is that we can clear out some of the rubbish that we all have in our hearts. And today we're going to park around a verse that we find in the book of Proverbs from the Bible that were written by a man called Solomon, who was a king of Israel and who was known for his godly wisdom. And the verse we're going to be looking at today is from Proverbs 4 and it's verse 23. And I'm going to read it from the Passion Translation. And it says this. So above all, guard the affections of your heart, for they affect all that you are. Pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being, for from there flows the wellspring of life. Now the second and third words there, above all, it stresses the importance that Solomon is putting on the idea of guarding your heart. It's not a nice optional thing to do, but it's a warning to guard our hearts above all else. This is how important it is, and it's because, as we've talked about, the affections of our heart affect all that we are. You can be sure that what is in your heart will start to show in the way that you speak and the way that you behave. The affections of your heart will influence the priorities that you have. The affections of your heart will affect where you spend your time and what you spend your money on. And if you don't know what the affections of your heart are, have a look at how it is that you do spend your time. Is it on good things? Have a look at what you spend your money on. Are they worthwhile things? When Jesus is teaching about money and possessions, he said this in Matthew chapter 6, 21. Matthew was a, one of Jesus' disciples who wrote down an eyewitness account of what he'd observed. And he recorded that Jesus said, wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. In other words, where we spend our time and our money and how we speak and act gives away our heart's desires. But it's worth noting here that the desires that are our hearts are down to us. We're not just given a set of desires and that's the end of it. Guarding the affections of our hearts is something that we have to do. We can't do it by passi passively acknowledging that it is a good idea. We actually have to do something. I once heard someone refer to the Bible as a good deodorant. It has to be applied. And in this verse, Solomon goes on and he says, pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being. When have you heard that phrase before, I wonder, pay attention? Perhaps it was at school where a teacher told you to pay attention for the benefit of your education. Perhaps a doctor told you to pay attention to your health. Perhaps it was a road sign warning you about an, a, a danger that would save you from having an accident. When we're told to pay attention, it's for our own good. Now, yesterday I'd left a saucepan on the hob in our kitchen and uh, it had boiled dry and uh, was making some rather loud cracking noises in the heat. And when I went over to it, I went just about to move the metal spoon that was in it, yes, I know, uh, when Andy, my husband, shouted, no! And I paid attention to it. He shouted a warning for my own good and I didn't get burnt. To ignore your innermost being, your heart, when you have been warned to pay attention to it, is like driving straight at a cliff, seeing the signs that are warning you about the cliff and carrying on anyway. It would be like me being told by Andy, stop, don't touch the spoon, it's ridiculously hot and you're going to get burnt. And then me picking up the spoon, regardless. Perhaps there are times in your life that you can think of where, with hindsight, you've looked back and seen the warning signs that you could have um, adhered to. The warning signs which might have saved you from heartache and causing heartache to others. Now, if you're just setting out exploring who Jesus is, then this is good advice. But if you're a Christian, a follower of Jesus, then we're called to take it further, to put aside the human desires that we have and to surrender our hearts to Jesus so that he might help us seek the desires that he would have us choose from our heart. A man called Paul, who was one of the early followers um, of Jesus and, and part of the early church, he gave this advice as to how we might do that. He said, stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, 
satisfying and perfect in his eyes. Perhaps you might take some time today to think about what the affections of your heart are. What are the things that you might need to guard against? You probably know what some of them are anyway, but ask God to speak to you, to reveal the things that he wants you to guard against for your own good. What renewing in your mind needs to take place? What boundaries can you put in place to guard your heart? Tomorrow we're going to look more closely about how we can have a heart that desires the things that God would have us desire. And I would love it for, if you'd join me. The song that I've chosen today is called Whole Heart by Hillsong United. And the words that really stood out to me was where it said, So here I stand, high in surrender, I need you now. Hold my heart, now and forever. My soul cries out, because once I was broken, but you loved my whole heart through. Sin has no hold on me, because your grace holds me now. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the wisdom that we can find in your word. And that I pray today as we begin a new day that we would consider where the guards on our heart need to be. Lord, I pray we would each be able to spend some time in your presence asking you to reveal those things where we need to put some guardrails in place. Lord, I thank you that you provide for us that your Holy Spirit is with us to help us. Help us now, we pray. Amen. You pulled me from the clay. You said.